This is the Atlas Emotion series, where we share edge of the earth ideas for a new world. Hello, and welcome to another Atlas Emotion series podcast. My name is Ella, and I feel very excited for today's episode. I've been looking forward to creating it for quite some time as the ideas have been flowing to me for a few months. It's called the environment as an expression of our truth. And I find that this is a very beautiful concept and it actually came to me when I was looking out to the clouds and I had this feeling, almost this idea of uh, impressionism as in art, that the environment that we see around us, the earth as we know it, is a brushstroke or an expression of what we all believe at core. So today I'm going to talk all about the idea that the truth that we hold inside of us is the paintbrush to which we paint the landscape that we see around us. So basically the idea is that this world that we see around us and every aspect of it, our personal world, our greater world, is an expression of us, of who we are being personally and as a civilization. So I want to touch on this concept in a number of ways. I'm going to be talking about it personally. I'm going to be talking about it uh, as to how it ripples out and affects our greater world. The first core idea is about our truth and understanding what is true for us. And then understanding that when we are clear on our truth, we can get to see our life as an artwork. Our truth is what paints the world that surrounds us. So beginning with the idea of our truth, when we were all young, we were asked, what do we want to be? What do you want to be? I think that a lot of us replied with what we want to do I wanted to be a filmmaker, that's what I wanted to do. But what did I want to be? I wanted to be free. I wanted to be able to live that experience of being a filmmaker as my truth. So to live as your truth, that is the feeling of freedom. To be able to live in that I am of what I desire to be. In this case, I desired to be a filmmaker and to say now, I am a filmmaker, well, then I I am in my freedom. I am living my truth. So it's actually this idea that your energy is the paintbrush with which you paint with. It's all about your energy. And your growing energy is what creates the world that surrounds you immediately and our greater world. So when we look at our greater world and we get a sense of uh, the different environments in which people are living, whether that is that they have a lot of space or they have no space at all, this is a reflection of who they are being on the inside. So to start to consider your life as a piece of art and to start to consider that your energy, the energy that you exude is your paintbrush, this is where it all begins. So I want to start with this concept of the I am. The I am is where our truth begins. What do you say at very core that you truly are? What do you really feel that you are? And are you living that, that truth completely? Are you honoring that state of being are you returning to that state of being this place of the i am where your truth exists is your true place is who you truly are and at any point you can choose that and you can choose that with your energy and the cool thing about it is what flows on from there is that you end up with a universe that is reflecting that state of who you are being. And you really get to to get this sense that the universe is always being created as a reflection of you. It's all just changing states 
as we are changing our states of being. So the universe has always been created. And this is why it's exciting to know that it's okay that you can't specifically perceive your future because your future is unfolding reflections of who you are being in this current moment. So it's all unfolding truth, all unfolding elements of what you believe to be true in that moment. I want to place emphasis on the fact that you may believe that your truth is a certain thing, but the way that the universe reflects is in the state of being that you are being in that moment. So are you believing that or wanting to believe that your truth is a certain way, but in fact, you believe the very opposite? I'll give you guys an example. So I, I had to meet a friend and I was conscious that I needed to get her a gift for her birthday, but I hadn't bought anything and I actually just felt like I probably had no time. I was feeling very, very scattered and all over the place and I went and sat down for meditation in the park. And when I went to sit down, actually I was finding that there was a bit of chaos surrounding me, just, uh, just as my mind was in a chaotic state. And I began this meditation and I found that actually um, I began to sink into just a, a deeper space of peace and relaxation in myself. And I found that this phrase came to me, change your state you change the structure this was a stunning statement to me and i actually felt like it was quite remarkable because the, the essential core idea of this is that if you change your state of being you change your experience of reality or if you change your state of being you change your reality itself in starting to walk a new state of being and you basically start to walk a new story and carve a new path. I, I mean, I knew that at the time, but what ended up happening was I sunk deeper and deeper into this feeling of just being grateful for where I am and enjoying myself and feeling very free inside. When I opened my eyes, I only had five minutes and, until I met my friend. So I just thought, well, there's definitely no time to get her a gift. Um, but I was relaxed and I, it was Anzac day. So I ended up seeing these dry, um, dry flower wreaths. And I thought, well, it would be cool to get her some dry flowers as her, um, as her gift. And I, I ended up taking a few more steps and I found there was this, um, shop on the corner and there were some dry flowers that were stunning. They were exactly her taste sitting out the front and I was in shock and then I go inside the store and every single element inside the store is a reflection of what she truly likes her taste so I only had five minutes to get her a gift but within that the universe had given me the reflection of delivering awe to me as I was able to sit in my true state of just relaxing into that place of of knowing that things are taken care of and so it basically it changed the structure I didn't see the shop beforehand and I grew up in this area and you know I last I went there the shop wasn't there so I really got this sort of magical experience of as I chose to change my state of being the structure of existence changed around me to reflect what I needed in that moment and give me exactly what I needed. And I'll tell you, it was like a pretty stunning kind of Harry Potter moment where I felt like I just got another touch of magic, another little dose of how beautiful um, life can be and how it can really, um, it can really just surprise you when you relax into that state of being that you are connected to it all and you are heard in what you desire and what you need. So I want to talk a little bit about this idea of relaxation 
and and how you start to really paint this life as you imagine that feeling in your mind there is a place that exists for all of us and it exists beyond um, the constant need to fix yourself that is the place of trust so to talk more about this idea of trust you basically are always in a state of trust you can trust that you are feeling unsafe in this moment you can trust that you need to be protected in this moment or you can trust in trust itself basically trusting that self-love is the pathway versus self-hate trust is is a bit of a is a bit of a journey in that way you have to keep turning up and recognizing what state of being am i exuding right now am i trusting in my unsafety or trusting in a need for protection or am I truly talking to myself and letting myself know that I can turn up in trust I can say that things are going to be taken care of and I am going to be held and I can truly sit in that and keep turning up basically we we can end up questioning ourselves or our ideas or what is true for us um, because we believe that there's no backbone in it but in fact, the beginning of the backbone of this is, is energy, is the fact that you had the intention and you hold that purpose. Um, you hold that truth within you, that energy within you. It's only about whether can you choose to trust in that very core truth, that very core energy you sit in, that in sits inside of you, that I am, that I am free. I am truly able to live the life that I desire. I, I have had um, quite an example of this in that I, many years ago, um, chose to live in a new house. Internally, I did. And I had the feeling of this house for a year. I had the feeling that it was very spacious, totally inspiring, and it was high up overlooking the water but was also nestled in the mountains and I looked far and wide for this what I didn't realize was that I was actually looking for my trust I was looking to feel like I was taken care of and I would be guided right there over that year I learned of all the ways that I didn't actually trust that this house existed, that this house was true for me. What I had to learn was to step out of an old paradigm which said that I was, you know, living a pipe dream and step into starting to speak to myself with words that said that this house is here. This house, um, I can feel this house within me, so therefore it is here. And within a week of me choosing to trust at a level that I never had, speaking, my, speaking to myself in that way, the house came and it is something out of my imagination. I have this as evidence now every single day that the environment is an expression of the truth that we hold inside of ourselves. It's just about whether we can choose that truth, whether we can keep choosing to talk to ourselves and letting ourselves know that Focusing in the direction of what is true for us is what will unravel and unveil that truth to us as a reflection in reality. In this way, we can lean on our vibration as our guide. It is our curiosity and our guidance that leads us to a higher vibration. In this way, it is a choice, a choice of how to speak to yourself a choice to make more space within your body, to to meditate more, to eat better, to um, relax a little bit more. And from that place, uh, the frequency changes inside of you. The way that you speak to yourself changes. Your focus point relaxes into your natural state of what is true for you, that you can relax, that you are taken care of, that you can follow what excites you the most. You get to see whether you are getting embroiled in the experience that you are in or whether you 
you are just observing, observing the thoughts, truly just observing. You get to see whether you believe life is about suffering or whether it is about power and choice. Whether you are trying to protect yourself by making a choice or actually making a choice in the direction of what you really feel you want to do in your heart, what is really true for you. That you're not trying to please another, but you're just being yourself. You're not trying to get your heart from the outside. You're truly tuning into your heart and and what feels good for you and moving from that place. And maybe even if you can't make a movement, that's been this week for me. It's about creating the space. This week I had um, a big dream to collaborate on a higher level to start working with larger organizations and I began the week by feeling into what this actually feels like in my body what does it feel like to receive um, the ability to work with greater um, organizations and I, I felt pretty fantastic it felt like I had the space that I needed to express at the, um, at, the, at the level that I really want to express these ideas at. And what ended up happening this whole week was I ended up facing myself a lot of times. I ended up facing that I actually didn't, you know, each morning I woke up and I said I would focus on something new. I would focus on a new truth inside of me, a new I am, so that there is I am respected, I am valued, Um, I trust myself, I am loved, I am appreciated. On that first day that I chose to say to myself, I am respected, uh, a situation came up that showed me that I actually um, needed to put up a fight to protect my beliefs because I didn't believe really in my heart that I was able to receive such um such an amazing opportunity in my world and with each new day as I chose a a new focus point I was encouraged to look at different aspects of myself that felt very alone that felt very disconnected and I found that in each of these key moments the core element that kept driving me in the direction of my focus and one particular night I was woken up by my guides and heard um, never underestimate the power of your focus and it put more resolve in me to focus even more on what I believe to be true and to feel that to feel what it feels like to to work with people um, at a higher level creating stories and sharing them um, even in a more widespread way and it felt awesome it felt like there was so much space but what this week of surrender was all about for me was to see all the places where I doubted that completely. I doubted that truth. I doubted that I was respected. I doubted that I had the power to, to choose a higher reality. I doubted that things would be quick. And as I started to give more space by, by really surrendering to what felt right for me in the universe and often that meant that I had to shift my focus or to recognize when I was choosing to focus that I was powerless and instead to focus on the fact that I had power then things started to change and as I asked for an aligned job I received it exactly on the days that I I wanted to I was excited for some opportunities that the, in, just in the last two days of me doing all this inner work have flowed through and it is that ability to talk to a higher platform to talk to uh, talk to larger organizations and I completely know that that those opportunities have flowed through because I have opened the space I've created the space every day by by looking at those moments where I felt powerless, where I felt disrespected, where I was disrespecting myself and needing to put up a fight or an argument because I didn't believe that these opportunities was, were possible for me. The belief that I held is that I don't get to experience that level of energy. 
I don't get to experience being that free is what I was saying to myself. And in what ways are you saying the same thing to yourself in your mind and then so exuding that energy? I don't get to experience that level of freedom. And to know that there is actually truly nothing wrong. Um, It is just that it needs space. And what I mean by that is when you do have that little bit of relaxation time or that little bit of surrender to what's happening, naturally your truth will emerge. The the layers, the layers will peel back your truth of, of you speaking from your heart of what really matters to you will, will show itself. It, it can't hide itself in the long, in the long run. And, and to understand that this is, this is where the real power lies. When you're making choices from that place of your heart, from that space created, it's incredible. You're being extremely clear. You're being articulate and you're allowing yourself to focus in that direction and so allowing the universe to show you that, you know, things can ha- happen quickly if, if you choose to focus. Never underestimate the power of your focus on your truth. So that is all that you have to do, shift your state of focus. And in that place, it will, the universe will yield to who you are because you yourself are life. You are the works itself. The universe will yield to your truth. So the universe is always giving you exactly that state of being that you're being. I find it's not very much Um, it can you know be a very challenging journey and in this way I definitely use my own personal inner vision and my dreams as a gift showing me what I'm currently embodying the state of being that I am truly exuding to the universe and so getting back I recognize that to me dreams are an emotional and vibrational language they're a continuation I believe of the vibration that you are exuding So I use dreams as a way to see what environment am I creating right now. And and then I I journal about it the next morning and I understand what they're trying to show me about what I actually believe about a situation. So that gives me a point of power and a point of choice. Now, I just want to address this idea, lastly, of the belief systems that we hold on our planet. I've been talking personally about the truths that we all hold as individuals and looking at our immediate environment and looking at what we truly believe inside, that is the state of being that we're expressing, gives us an understanding of, of why things are the way they are on our greater planet. Because there are extremes of beliefs on our planet, there are extremes of people's experience. We get this reflection in places where there are slums or there, are, there is war. There's no space for these people to self-realize, to, to choose their own truth, to choose what their I am is. You know, that, that, that I am free, I'm truly free. The beliefs there that, that they exude you know, perhaps are that they are not free and we end up with places where there, were, there is limited space. But to recognize that in our world, in our particular realities, it's our emotional blocks that create fear and control-based realities. We, we can then begin to choose freedom, choose the truth of freedom. To know that both of these worlds exist inside of us, the world of judgment and no space and the world of belonging and more space. They're both just perspectives and our opportunities are to know how have we changed our relationship to each of those perspectives. That continuing struggle of truth that you may have, that big thing that you find keeps coming up for you that you believe to potentially be true. How have you changed your relationship to it? And another one I want to mention is that we are connected with everything. We're connected with everything. So if you are feeling or exuding that state of being of fear, then there are many different ways that that could come forward. 
and show itself to you. But if you're choosing to exude that state of being of surrender, of freedom, of, of truly being valued, there are many different ways as well. And ultimately, they sort of unpack themselves as your, your dream or imagined version, but seem to often be so far beyond what you could imagine. They are really expressing that at our core, the truths that exist underneath all these layers for all of us as human beings is just magic, is awe, is, is pure heart, beauty and connection. So understand that all of these things are just changing states. Um, this environment that are, is around us is a reflection of the changing state of being that we are being on the inside. This environment is all just an expression of ourselves and as we will never stop expressing, so so our environment will never stop expressing. As we are the painterly brushstrokes of energy, our environment reflects that as an impressionistic painting. So we always have this feeling that we need to express ourselves and my belief is that if we if we all had that opportunity to speak how we truly feel or to open that space in ourselves to at least hear what we truly feel, then there wouldn't actually be hurt because all of those states of being that feel hurt or disrespected would be addressed, um, would be cared and tended to, and we could shift our focus to I am truly valued, I am truly respected. Underneath all of these layers um, is God and you cannot truly hide God when I say this word to me what I believe is is love underneath all this all these layers is the state of being of pure unconditional love and our emotions are just like passing clouds when we let them pass um, we experience that more of our love our truth the God inside of us is revealed so as we heal ourselves, we're actually healing ourselves into the revealing of the God within. And, and knowing that, you know, our only real job here is to keep ourselves clean, you know, to keep ourselves honoring and respecting what is true for us, that I am valued, I am respected, I'm honored, I'm cared for, I'm loved. And it starts with the way that we talk to ourselves. We are tending to ourselves with that love. And we are tending to ourselves with that respect. We are saying to ourselves that we are here tolerating and embodying what is truly true for us. And that means that we are speaking to ourselves in a much kinder way. So that true strength is, is to be in union with God, to be in union with me, with with I am, with your I am, to be in union with what you truly believe. And that means that you, you know, you've, you've practiced so much focusing in that direction um, that you create yourself into that place of, of your I am valued, I am cared for, and the universe will only reflect that. So to know that to be one of the world's most creative humans is actually to be committed to being totally yourself. Nature will always celebrate all expressions um, as they're all just expressions of ourselves and we will never stop expressing ourselves. Our truth is, uh, our truth is where our heart sits. And for all of us to get a little bit back to our truth, we just have to, to have a little bit more joy in, in our lives and to, to not need to follow the standards of others and to recognize perhaps sometimes when we are, sometimes these challenges come up because they're showing us that we're not honoring what is true for us, like what we really want for our lives. Um, and to recognize that, you know, there are elements of, of our environment like the trees and the mountains that they're so stable because they are actually resonating at this frequency of the I am. Whereas humans put a lot of, um, a lot of things on top of that, as opposed to just being, I am love. You know, we say, I am, I am love, but I'm actually afraid of all these things. 
but to strip all those um, fears away and, and to come back into that place of our truth. I am love. I am loved and I am valued. This is, this is the real place. We are all expressions of creation and you, you know, none of us can truly forget who we are. It may take some stripping back of the layers, but we'll get there um, in time. And I just really wanted to share an incredible story with you, an expression of what I believe I'm communicating with this idea of the environment as an expression of our truth. I had the feeling to start creating songs and I went, okay, universe, what I need is a little notebook and I want this notebook, um, the songwriting notebook, to be uh, able to make others feel, to make me feel the way I want others to feel when they hear the music. And I had the feeling to, to take a trip down the coast and I ended up at this quaint little um, bookstore. I was drawn to it and I went, oh, okay, you know, this is quite cool and nice. Um, but then I was drawn into this corner and there were these three books that are picture books, children's books. One's called, um, what do you do with a chance? What do you do with a problem? And the one that I was most drawn to is called, what do you do with an idea? So a little bit of a spoiler alert, but it's also available on the internet. So I don't feel like I'm spoiling too much, but I'm about to tell you the story. So I want you to replace the idea with truth. So this little boy comes across an idea one day and this idea is shaped like a golden egg. And for example, this little same boy came ac comes across his truth one day. So this idea or truth follows the boy around and he doesn't know what to do with it. And he actually starts to feel a bit ashamed of it and he wants to hide it from other people because he doesn't know what they'll think. But one day he turns around and he chooses to nourish it actually and to, to be kind to it and give it great food. And it gets bigger and bigger and he spends more and more time with it until one day this idea or this truth explodes into the sky and becomes the entire world around him. And so what do you do with an idea, what do you do with your truth? You nourish it, you hold on to it until one day it becomes the entire world that you see around you. And that truth may change the world. I really wanna thank you for joining me. And I say all these things looking out of a window that is a total expression of a truth that I only held on to uh, within me for such a long time. But to be sitting here and to be seeing that it's totally possible. I know that is the case for every single one of us. Every single one of you guys listening, your truth is remarkable. And I'm here to remind you that one day if you continue to nourish it and treat it kindly and it doesn't need to take long, that truth will explode into the sky, reflecting that you have nourished it and it will become the entire environment around you. And the fact that you held onto it and you cared for it and you continue to love it means that one day your truth your newest state of being will change the world. And this is how we truly change the world. By allowing ourselves to express what is true for us. That we are loved, we are respected, we are valued. And that we get to choose what we dream about. And to choose our, to live our lives from that place. We have seen an environment and an earth that is an expression of a lot harsher truths for a long time. And I am here to remind us that 
we can choose the gentler, the kinder, and the more beautiful truths that sit inside of us of creativity and awe and wonder. And we can allow our new environment, our new earth to express um, this version of truth. So I want to say thank you so much for joining me. And that is this concept that this environment that surrounds us is an expression of our truth. So what truth are you choosing now? What state of being are you exuding now? And where do you choose to put your focus? Never underestimate the power of your focus. This is the power of what you are going to create in this world and what environment will reflect itself to you. Are you choosing your truth that you are loved and respected or are you perhaps choosing another? I hope that you're doing well and I'm thanking you so much for joining me and I hope that you have an incredible, incredible time. It was an incredible pleasure choosing the truth of making this podcast and allowing it to explode into the sky and become my entire reality. It's, um, it's a dream and it's a dream to share these ideas. So I, um, I'm very much looking forward to connecting with you. As I said, I am a filmmaker specializing in creating new earth media, conscious media, conscious production and photography feel free to get in contact with me anytime. Um, in addition to sharing these ideas um, on film shoots, sharing the ideas of others and um, sharing their remarkable new earth stories. So it's very, very exciting to be doing that as well. I look forward to connecting with you. There'll be a new podcast in a month. See you later.